Let me speak to Sean, please. Yes, I know it's New Year's Eve. It's my New Year's Eve, too. And I wouldn't be calling him if it wasn't important. Now listen, you tell Sean that Monk Raleigh, his editor, his commanding officer, his boss, says it's a matter of life and death, his. And if I don't reach him, goodbye. Sean, you're looking for, I don't... I don't want Sean. At this point, I want you. Oh, boss, I didn't know you cared. This is serious, Friday. I can't reach anyone else, so I want you to grab a pencil and paper and listen very carefully. All right, hold on. Okay, all set, boss. Friday, I want you to take your little camera and shoot your little pictures and get the hell out and don't get involved. Understand? Now, you know I wouldn't do anything like that. Get involved with who? Blake Tarr, the Blake Tarr, the billionaire, the brother they call the Black Howard Hughes. Well, why would he be coming back here after all these years? Don't wonder, Friday. Just take your cute little behind out there and get those pictures and, God damn it, don't get involved. <laughs> Cloris, hey, I can't make it to the party, but I can't. Please, I've got to talk with you. There's nobody else who can help. It's a matter of... Look, I'd like to, but I just can't. Something's come up and I can't get out of it. It's important to me. Friday, please. Look, let me call you as soon as I get back, okay? Happy New Year, Cloris. Thank you. 
flight 106 now departing at gate 7, immediate departure. He must be working at the other gate. I'll check. Hold tight, baby. No visitors allowed in there. Oh, my old man's working tonight. Uh -huh. It's New Year's Eve. Come on, I just want to find out what time he's getting off. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Hey, why don't you keep this? Have a little taste. Uh -huh. Come on, come on. Uh -huh. Try it. Come on. All right. And I'll go and find out what time he's getting off, and we'll come back and we'll all party. Party. Party, yeah. <laughs> hey, Miss. Next time, ask for somebody other than Leroy. He don't work here. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> Turkey.
I'm back. I'm at the office. I'll be over as soon as I can. That's all right. You don't have to. Well, I know it's all right, but I thought you said... Look. It's over. Don't come here. What's all over? I thought you want... Friday, don't come here. Okay. Well, okay. Look, I'll see you tomorrow at the fashion show. Mr. Rye, I've got a couple more. Now, look at these. Good. Good. Some of these are great. I can just find one that shows for sure that's Blake Tar and nobody else. Hey, Monk. I got this frantic message that you were looking all over town for me. Well, the late Mr. Sean North, a demon photographer. What are you doing working on CP time? Oh, come on, Monk. This was New Year's Eve. Was it something important? Would you say the world's richest black man coming home important? Blake Tarr? Or would you say three hitmen waiting to kill him important? And a shoot with Tarr wounded and maybe dead? Is any of that important? You tell me. Well, I'll tell you. It was damned important. The biggest story of the year, and I'm forced to send Miss Toto and Bauman here, who almost got herself killed by an assassin, getting these photos. Oh, boss, I... Friday, know. I told you. Hey, I know this guy. Who's he? I don't know, but I've met him somewhere. You just don't forget the fine ones. I'm gonna park you for a moment while I run my game. <laughs> it's your show, fancy man. with them Italian. I'll take it up to her. All right, all right. Fancy, she just loves your press. Gucci. Huh. Is my taxi here yet? Yeah, he's waiting downstairs. I'll be right there. OK, you got your house key? Yeah, I got it. Okay. of this sweet thing. Well, if it isn't King Farouk and his bevy of beauties. Have you seen my tax man? You don't need no taxi. Where to? Well, uh, Marina's now that you mention it. Hey, well, that's all right. You gonna check out some fine leathers and stuff? Uh, fans, I hate to tell you this, but some of us do work once in a while. Why? Well, welfare is just not my style. Well, I got your style, sweet thing. So you are wasting your pretty face and all of your real talents. Fancy, there is nothing you have that I want, and I don't hustle for nobody. Hustle? Them white boys would be tearing down the doors to get next to you. And we could have our thing, too. Ah, uh, nigga, please. You have lost your mind. My bitch, my ladies don't think that their nigga <laughs> has lost his mind. With them bad rags, tough pad. I mean, some heavy blow and a boss ride. Shit. And each and every one has got her own personal health and welfare plan. You have lost your mind, you know that? But you got to admit, my shit is heavy. <laughs> <laughs>
Listen to me. Please. Please. You have got to get him to help me. Before the police come. Charlie, don't hang up. Charlie, please. Charlie! Cloris, girl, when I tell you what happened, you will not believe. What's wrong? Oh, Friday, it doesn't matter. I knew I was doing wrong, but I just kept getting in deeper and deeper. And well, last night he... Oh, it's a he. Come on, what's his name? Listen, will you stop it, please? Cloris, what is wrong with you? I told you last night it was all over. So let's just forget about it, okay? So there you are. Come on, Cloris, let's get you out of this and into your first outfit. What do you think? The only thing we have to do is dress your bond. Look who's here. Oh, Sean, I'm sorry. I had to go backstage to see a friend. If you cared anything about your job with me, instead of dating every handwriter in town, drinking, playing around, and staying out all night... Now, look here, Sean North. You knew where I was last night, and furthermore... Oh, you... Uh, 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 Nonviolence. Besides, too uh, nice a day, too nice a place. Besides, any close and his mother was disowned him. <laughs> sorry about that. What are you doing here at this fashion show? What all private eyes do, watching an unfaithful wife cheat on her unfaithful husband. Oh, all right. Well, for a moment there, I thought she switched on me. No way. I'm on my J-O-B. Well, it's nice work if it pays well. It pays well. All right, see you later. How about you and me getting on our J-O-B? I'll take a 48 mag on that, and uh, we'll shoot black and white in the night. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, hello, George. You're looking absolutely fantastic. How do you manage it? <laughs> oh, hello, Cleo. You're here to steal my originals again, aren't you, darling? <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome. Today I have for your perusal, and I'm quite sure your approval, one of my most fantastic original collections. And I choose to call it Sapphires and Sisters. We're all familiar with the joy of sex, particularly since that doctor has determined that sex is on the male mind every other minute and on the female mind every other second. <laughs> well, I put it all together in one group which I call the Four Seasons of S-E-X. Not exactly subtle, is she? She never was, even when I was modeling for
Boston. Has anybody seen Chloris? She should be here. Chloris! <laughs> has yet to come. I would like now to present my most fantastic creature, a superior being, a vision of Africanic beauty, a black goddess come to Earth, Miss Cloris Boston, as Kalahari Sunrise. <laughs> Body snatchers, they can take this one away and get on it. Coach, you phoned it in, right? What put you on the scene? Get your rocks off at fashion shows these days? You know something, Lieutenant? I'd rather spend my time looking at the live ones than going around the city picking up the dead ones like you do for low pay. Besides, I'm better looking than you are. Well, you may have a point there. Maybe that's what's ruining my stomach. Got any ideas who did it? Why don't you ask Ford Malot? Who's Ford Malot? Some son of a bitch who's been trying to ruin me for years. He's been stealing my designs and selling them for ready and wear. Is he a designer too? That's what he calls himself. But this plastic faggot couldn't design a handkerchief, let alone a dress. The only thing he can do is steal from me. Oh. So you think uh, he killed this girl, huh? Well, let's put it this way. This ill excuse of a human being has had this girl on regular basis coming and going between here and D.C. He might have thought she knew too much. for Miss uh, Friday Foster. Yeah, she's my sister. No kidding. Yeah, well, look, I'm from Ace Photoshop. See, I got this camera she ordered, and she got a sign for it. She's upstairs in 807. Going up. All right. Thanks, little brother.
all is too much. Are you sure you've got the right man, Friday? Oh, it's the same man I bumped in at the airport. Well, what have you got here? Is a, an attempted murder, assassination, and a stiff full of bullets at that Clara's girl's apartment. Wait, what, what? What? What do you mean, stiff? Somebody named Chet Freed. Chet Freed? That's Clara's boyfriend from out of town. Jake, he's a part of the trio that tried to kill Blake Tarr. Then that's why she called me. You want to tell me how long she's been dealing? Dealing? Oh, come on. Now, what are you trying to say? Now, wait a minute. Was she, was she a junkie, or was she pushing, or what? Well, you schooled me. Now, we found 50,000 uncut pure junk in her bedroom. Now, how does that read? That's a lie. Floris was a little wild. She might have had a, a few heavy boyfriends here and in D.C., but she was not dealing. No way. I knew her. Jake, she was my friend. Friends in D.C.? What kind of friends? Politicians, maybe? I don't know. Do you know anyone who would invite her to a big-time party? Now, we found an invitation made out to her name. Now, who were some of her friends, honey? I don't know them personally. Publicly, maybe? I don't know anything about that. Then, she was killed because of the junk. <sighs> no, believe me this time. She was not into dope. That was not her thing. Then why was she killed, honey? I think the man has a point. Sure wish I had some beer. Oh, Lord. I give to you the soul of this young woman. A child of God who always held out her hand to others. Who always gave and never asked in return. We ask thee, almighty God, to love Cloris as we have loved her and take her into your kingdom. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Excuse me a minute. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell Him cold. in the house of the Lord forever. Funny? I don't see anybody. Get this straight. You say some gal stole a hearse? That's right. How do you suckers find these problems? Any idea who she was? Look, Lieutenant, all I know, it was a black female, about 5'7". If I might say so, she's kind of attractive. Oh, yeah, she had this large bag hanging over her shoulder. A camera gadget bag? Exactly. Coat. Now, it's Friday into stealing hearses now. Oh, come on, Lieutenant. You know better than that. She must have spotted someone from that tar shooting at the airport. She grabbed the first thing available, a hearse. What are you going to do? Stick her on the ground for it? And the gal's got more balls and brains. She nuts or what? She's just all woman, Lieutenant. Damn, I need a beer. <laughs>
Tudo. Oh, man. You had no right to do that, Friday. Stealing our hearse, for Christ's sake. And destroying public property. And losing a $600 camera. Is that your way of not getting involved? Mr. Riley, it was the man that... And do you know what it costs Glance to keep you out of jail? And what it's liable to cost us if that funeral director decides to sue or press charges? There was nothing else I could do. Yeah. And my old man invented the cotton gin. Can't you get it under your skull, Friday, that your life is in danger and that somebody's trying to kill you? So you're out of the slammer. I thought I wouldn't see you until visiting hours. How was the bread and water? You got something for me, Colt? That's depending on whether or not you didn't spend up all your money on lawyers and bail bondsmen. I might look into something for you in Washington, D.C. tomorrow. Like what? Like a bunch of flowers sent to Clarence Boston's funeral from a no-name friend. Friday saw it. Tell me, um... Do you know a fellow named David Lee Hart? The senator? You mean Cloris Boston had a senator stashed away? Sure. Cloris had quite a few friends in D.C. She would fly down there for these weekend dates. Some brother named Ford Malat set him up. Now, that's a coincidence. He's the man. I use the term loosely that I'm going to see. Well, all right. When do we go? You're not going anyplace. Oh, Mr. Riley. No way. Oh, please, I gotta find out who killed Cloris. I wanna know about this Black Widow thing, and I wanna prove that she was not dealing. What you really want is Senator Hart to send you some flowers for your funeral. Here's the print. Clear as a bell. The blow-up came out perfect. It's him. This is the man that's been trying to kill me. Let's get a print of this to the police right away. I want this guy caught before he catches up with Friday. Oh, Monk, now you see why I have to go to D.C. Friday. There's absolutely no damn way that you or Glance Magazine is going on a manhunt to Washington. And that's the bottom line. And you might as well forget it. No way. No way. Hey, what you doing, girl? Hey, what you doing, girl?
our safe. Are they good? We have met him on a park bench. Or this place. Well, would the White House lawn suit you better, Mr. Hopkins? Anywhere is better than this. And besides, since you've brought me here, I'm beginning to wonder about you Friday. Don't be afraid. I won't bite you. This is a public place. You'll be all right. Yeah. But I think I'll need protection. Oh, Jesus. Uh, excuse me, miss. Could you... Could you tell me where I can find Ford Malone, please? Uh, maybe. Well, what's your business, sweetie? Um, just tell him that Friday Foster is here from Grant's magazine. Okay, he's right over there. His muscles are bigger than mine. That's not all. <laughs> Um, Ford Malott. Coochie, coochie. Friday Foster from Glance Magazine. Oh, how are you, darling? It's always so nice to meet someone from the press. And who is he? Cole Hawkins, private investigator. Ooh! <laughs> oh, do be seated. Oh, yes, darling, sit down. <laughs> uh, I hate cliches, so I won't use any now. No, oh, yes, I know the uh, what's it all about bit, right? Yes, it's been done to death. And so was Cloris. Oh, yes, I heard about it. Some uh, Lieutenant Jake Wayne called me about it earlier. Uh, Cloris, a marvelous girl. I mean, nobody. Nobody could wear things the way she could. With a body put together in heaven with tender, loving hands. And to think that that simple policeman would intimate that I would terminate such a talented girl. <laughs> I'm afraid that's impossible. That's a private party, that reception. Oh, Milan, you've booked dates for Cloris with government VIPs and senators. Now, why can't you do it for me? But that was different. She had that, uh, touch. Look, Malad, Cloris and I grew up together. We were like sisters. Now, if she can be invited to this reception, so can I. Interesting. Maybe. With the right gown and a new coiffure, you might pass for her. But there's no way. You know, there is some reason why you don't want me at this reception. Are you afraid that Black Widow might be there? You know about Black Widow? Friday, darling, when you are fooling around with ambitious men like Senator Hart, it can be hazardous to your health. Take my advice. Stay out of it. Go back. Go home. Get laid. Have a baby. Or something. <laughs> what you're trying to say is you won't help us, right? Sweetie, tell your liberated little woman that I can't possibly. Well, with or without your help, Mr. Malott, I am going to be at that reception. Well, shoot yourself, sweetie. Isn't she marvelous when she's mad? Oh. <laughs> Uh, Friday, just, just, just a moment. I, uh, I want to stay and talk to Mr. Murad and ask him a few questions. Man to man.
trying to kill me, Colt. Well, did you get a look at him? Do you know who he was? No. no. We're not going to find the reason out here now, are we? No. No, come on, let's get out. I didn't want to bother you with this. But when the girl showed up here and she knew about Black Widow, I thought, well, this could really cause trouble. All kinds of trouble. Look, it's all right for you to sit up there in your high throne and feel safe. He did right to call. But the girl can't know too much. Now, you listen to me. She won't hinder us. There's too much at stake. Don't worry about it. I'm on top of it. Jeez. You know something, Friday? I don't think we should go through with this. I don't like it. I don't feel right about it. You know what? You're right. You put on the dress and you go on in there. That's not funny. You know there's trouble in there. You could be hurt or something in there. Danger. Uh, you know you love me. Now, where's the invitation? That's right, the invitation. Oh, you didn't. I got it. Here it is. Oh, you scared me, Friday. Oh, Are you sure this is going to work? <clears throat> well, it ain't the size of the ship, it's the motion of the ocean. Well, watch this ocean. Mmm. <clears throat> man, that's some fine lady you working for. Say, man, what's she into? Oh, well, she's uh, into. You know, she's, uh... Oh, don't bother to announce it. Just tell my husband I'll be in the powder room. I'll see you next Sunday. Minimal we'll Sunday. You must be the Reverend Noble Franklin. Why, well, yes. My, my, you are an attractive young lady. Oh, I thank you, Reverend Franklin. Oh, just call me Noble, sister. You see, I'm not one to stand on ceremonies. Now, uh, what can I do for you? Uh, oh, oh, it's so silly. Speak up, sister. I'm a very understanding man, very understanding. Uh, well, you see, I'm a church reporter for our newsletter, and I would love to do a story and take pictures of you. No problem at all. Now, where's your camera? Uh, you see, that's just it. I forgot it, and I could just kick myself for being so... Oh, I see. Don't worry about it. <laughs> see, I can set up a special appointment for you uh, up in Jericho. Uh, a Jericho? Oh, where's that? That's my estate. My meditative retreat up the river. Uh -huh. And, uh, we could spend some time for, uh, purpose. <clears throat> Uh, well, you know, you then again, Reverend, I don't, I'm not so sure. Reverend Franklin not only has a way with a prayer, but beautiful women as well. I don't think I've had the pleasure. Oh, yes, uh, Senator Hart. Uh, I want you to meet uh, Miss Friday Foster, very, very pretty church reporter. <sighs> and what church are you a reporter for? Well, you see, Senator Hart, that's not exactly the truth. I really came here to see you regarding a mutual friend. I'm sorry we missed you at the funeral. Funeral? Who's? Cloris Boston. I think we ought to get to know each other better. Excuse us, Reverend. Sure. And you still have the invitation to come up to Jericho. I hate this thing here. Your flowers were a comfort to Cloris. It was the least I could do. She was a friend. Oh, just a friend? 
But that's not what the DC grapevine says. A smart girl like you shouldn't believe in gossip, should you? Excuse me, David. I spoke with the congressman, and he has agreed to the meeting. Good. Uh, Friday Foster, this is uh, my executive assistant, Charles Foley. Miss Foster. Mr. Foley? Uh, Charles, Miss Foster and I are going to my place to uh, discuss some mutual interests. So watch the store, will you? Yes, sir. Nice meeting you, Miss Foster. While you're in Washington, if I can be of any assistance whatsoever, feel free to call. But when you do, just ask for Charlie. Thank you. I'll remember that, Charlie. After one divorce and 12 years in Washington, one gets to know his people. More brandy? More brandy and I might lose all my inhibitions. Maybe worse. Look what happened to Cloris. Clarice was only a pal, just a friend. So we made it a few times, but our relationship was only physical. I'm really sorry about what happened. If I could change it, I really would. Will you believe me? Trust me? Then you can start trusting me. You can tell me what the hell is going on. Okay. Find yourself a certain Mr. Blake Tar, and it will all come as clear as mud in his wash. I'm told he's the man behind it all. Now, why would he plan his own assassination? It's all part of a big power play to make you believe it's something it isn't. And what's your power play? Are you something you're not, too? beautiful women DC has ever seen. You're very sure of yourself, aren't you? Are you? When I think about it, it's just as well the girl wasn't killed. You, uh, Really think so, huh? Here you are, sir. I thought you said she came from Glance Magazine. I did. It seems she came to Washington, bluffed her way into the reception, specifically to meet with Senator Hart. It seems she tied the murder of her friend to the senator. Well, uh, did the senator tell her anything? No. Well, that's good, isn't it? Did uh, <laughs> she tell the senator anything? Only that she'd heard about the Black Widow. Well, aren't you worried about that, Charles? That's why I think she can be of use to me. If the senator will go along, and I think he will, or else I'll have to tell him how those thousands of contributors to his campaign is really just one big contributor, Edith Hartman Griffith, who is now willing to go along with me. Well, by herself, she's nothing, but with Glance Magazine behind her, she may be able to help you flush out Blake Tarr. The senator has already put a bug in her ear. He said that Blake Tarr is the one that can tell her about the murder of her friend, Cloris. Well, he's certainly right about that. Isn't he, Charles? Blake Tarr is the answer to all our problems, Mr. Griffith. Well, that's what the senator said, Mr. Riley. 
His office would give us full cooperation. Why don't you put some sugar in your cereal? Nah, I don't like it too sweet. Hey, Blackhawk, you got any money? I've got barrels of it. Why? I got some dynamite perfume, out of sight watches, ladies' lingerie, and a whole lot of other stuff for sale. So now you're hustling, huh? Nope. Strictly black capitalism. Well, if Glance doesn't want the story, then maybe somebody else will. Why'd you do that? Why'd you hang up on me? Call him back. Why should I call him back? He doesn't care. I've tried so hard. Well, you're gonna have to try hard. Come on. Oh, Mr. Riley, I'm sorry for talking to you like that. Oh, Katarina. Never mind that. I've got information about your trip to Washington. Oh? What? I can't talk on the phone, but I think you'd better get your little derriere down here to my office now. Friday, I said no. Was that monk begging your forgiveness? <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was Madame Rena, and she wants me to come over. Can you give me a ride? Only if you promise me there won't be any dead bodies lying around. Now, promise. All right, I promise. Madame Rena, it's Friday Foster. Why do you have to stir things up? Watch out! about Black Widow. The Senator Hart said... Get a pencil and write what I say if you want to know the truth. doing here?
call this number when you can. But whose? They'll ex explain. You're wrong about black. Like, yeah. Rena! Rena! She's dead, Cole. Well, that makes two for today. But there's one of those killers who won't be hunting you no more. Did she say anything? Just, um... Nothing. Hello? I'm Friday Foster, and I'm calling from Madame Marina. No, she can't come to the phone. She's dead. 93. Just now. No, he's dead, too. Hey, I haven't the slightest idea. Hey. She just asked me to call before she died. That's all I know. Come where? The, the city bank building? Hello? Hello? certain precautions I have to take. Rooftops and helicopters and henchmen. Rena was right. You've got guts. What do you know about Rena? She worked for me. It's because of her and Malat that I came back to the States. They told me what was going on. And what is going on, Mr. Tarr? Black Widow. The Senator Hart was right after all. You are behind Black Widow. What else did the charming senator tell you? That you know who killed my friend, Cloran. Mm -hmm. And that I go around killing my own people? That I set myself up to be assassinated at the airport? Come on, does that make sense to you? That heart's a clever son of a... You know, he's got everybody believing in that unity scam of his, when in reality, it's just a front, a power grab. I think that Black Widow is a code name for it. David Lee Hart, huh? Rena said you can be trusted. That's why I'm here. Well, this is all a little confusing, you know. Well, I got to know the when, the what, and the way of Hart's timetable. All she was able to find out was that it had something to do with St. Valentine's Day. 
Well, that's the day after tomorrow. Right, but the question is, will you help me? Why would I? Because I've asked you. You're quite sure of yourself, aren't you? Are all black millionaires like that? Probably. It goes with the job. Some job. I can't say that I dislike it. Coming from the ghetto all the way to the top was quite a trip. But I'm curious about you. There are things I'd like to know. Like what? Like, who is Friday Foster? Where's she going? Who am I? Well, that's a funny question. Well, first, I'm a woman. Second, I'm a photographer. And a big sister to a little brother who's really a 40-year-old man. <laughs> and um, I like cats and dogs and horses and men, but not necessarily in that order. I make my own decisions, and I'm a Gemini. That it? Well, that's enough. But, well, as far as uh, where I'm going, do you know now or in the future? Either way. Well, I see that I'm going to be getting into something I did not expect. What did you expect? You know what I expected? I expected you to be a rat. But you're different. Maybe you forget I'm straight off the block. Mm -hmm. I know that's what canceled my theory. You treat a person like a person and a woman like a woman. I try to treat a lady like a lady. Happy Valentine's Day. You didn't phone, you didn't write, you didn't do nothing. You know, you could have been dead for all I know. Well, I wasn't, was I? You know, for two days you're missing, and the minute you're back, you drag me here. Would you mind telling me why we're here? We are going to see the senator. I want to ask him a few questions, and I want some no-jive answers. To what? To where are all the black leaders? I have been calling them all over the place, and no one seems to know where they are. How would the senator know? Now, would a pimp lose track of his table? Senator Hart. I'm his executive secretary. Well, would you tell him that Friday Foster is here to see him, and I don't intend to be kept waiting? <laughs> well, you're gonna have to, because he's not in, and he won't be at all today. Could you, uh, call him on the phone? He didn't leave a number. Sorry. What about, uh, Charles Farley? With the senator. Cold. Cold. This has got to be the day for Black Widow. Hmm? And Valentine's Day. Now, doesn't that mean something to you? A massacre. Did he say anything about today? Anything? Well, the only thing he said before he left was that this was the day that the walls come tumbling down. Don't make much sense to me. Nothing much would. I don't get it. Does it mean anything to you? The walls come tumbling down. Joshua fit the Battle of Jericho, huh? Joshua fit the Battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fit the Battle of Jericho. And the walls come tumbling down. That's it! Jericho! Don't you know what Jericho is? Sweetheart, I'm a Sunday school dropout. I don't know what you're... That's Reverend Noble Franklin's place. He invited me there. Sturdy old man. Yeah, well, so what? So the name of the place is Jericho. That makes sense. It does, huh? That's where the Black Widow starts. What are you talking about? Jericho! Jericho! Well, what's the matter, huh? 
We've got company and not the friendly kind. Yeah, I see the ugly and the ugly. Well, let's go out back. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. They don't know me. I'll go down there and give them the old fan shuffle. You go back out and get on the horn with Blake Tarr. Can you dig it? Yeah, I can dig it. Are you sure he didn't leave a message? No, he can't call me back. I'll try again later, okay? Brothers, what's going on? Hold it, blood. Where is Sapphire? So what? Pull it together, fellas. Go. Where's Friday? Hey, man, how you gonna ride in here screeching and blowing your horn and scare the life out of me like that? I was fixing my car, man. And you come running in here with your bad boys in the front and scare the life out of me, man. Who are you, Jim? Blake Tar. Now, come on, get in the car, quick. Where are we going? To the airport. Come on. Hey, man, if that bro gets into the kind of trouble, I'm going to deal with you myself, hear me? First, me and I got killed, and then you and then you going to come in with this bullshit about we going to the airport. Let me tell you one goddamn thing. <laughs> He meant to shoot him down. Who? Our great leader, Senator David Lee Hart. He's the one behind Black Widow, and he's... Are you out of your mind? What are you doing here? What would I be doing here? Uh, he's our leader. The whole unity concept is his. But, but the walls... The walls of prejudice, of discrimination, of misunderstanding and hate. Every important black leader in the country is here today. We are acting together as one for the first time. But if you're not behind Black Widow, and Blake Tar isn't behind Black Widow, then whose army is that? What army? <laughs> Shut 
gun the prestige. And best they may buy us a little time. Time for what? David, does this make any sense to you? Suppose you wanted to destroy Black Power. What other way than to get all of our leaders together in one place and wipe them out? But I saw blacks with the whites. I saw them. By hell, some niggas would do anything for a dollar. What the hell is going on here? So it's evident we were wrong about each other. I was wrong about you, and you? Well, yeah, I was certainly wrong about you. I figured that you were behind Black Widow, and that it was just a power grab. But then who the hell is the devil behind all this? Friday, I've told you over and over, I'm not a man of violence. Right, Mr. Foley? Mr. Tarr, I'm sorry my friends missed you at the airport, but they were goddamn bungling fools. Oh, Mr. Foley. 
You're the bumbling fool. You thought you could sucker David into getting all these black leaders up here to massacre every last one of them. You couldn't lead anybody anywhere. You're such a fool, man. Oh, Mr. Foley, something you forgot, that us folks can stick together when it is necessary. to check this out. Now, I got a dynamite Gucci purse and some rocks from Tiffany's. Now, get to that. Hey, that's real cool, man. That's real cool. I take it up to her right now. OK, will you do that, little man, because I'm going to lay right out here. like I have a few admirers, doesn't it? Wow. Wow. The door is open. Oh, it's hard. Oh, Colt. Look at all this stuff. Have you ever seen so many beautiful things? My God. <sighs> I brought you a little something, but uh, mm -hmm. it's too little and uh, too late. Oh, Colt. Oh. oh, it's beautiful. It's cheap. Oh. You know, between Senator Hart and Blake Tarr, I feel like um, a lightweight. <laughs> you should. Oh. I'm going to kill him. Oh, cold. But when it comes down to it, you're my main man. Shall we go? By all means. I got the chariot downstairs. Uh -huh. Dinner. Dancing. Flowers. Moonlight. And, uh, no, no kids. kids. <laughs> 